Welcome back to Wilson Reviews and today I'm going to review The Amazing Spider-Man 2 Nearly concluding our Spider-Man series Sorry for that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 How, Who was um, directing it again? Mark Webb of course um, And he um, does his own thing I guess you can say And it's an it's an okay film like It's shot really well and it looks nice enough but I feel like it just isn't like the Sam Raimi films. And I like Raimi's um, way of um, directing. So let's talk about the film itself. Where is this um, film leading off? It leads off um, of Peter Parker um, con being Spider-Man, confronting the, the man um, behind Rhino. And he is trying to um, arrest him. Um, meanwhile, he's trying to juggle that and talk to Gwen Stacy at the same time. And organized to be at his graduation um, that day. Um, after the whole ordeal, he is um, there at the at graduation, and then he is torn between being with Emma Stone and not being with her because of what happened in the last um, movie with her dad saying, you need to stay away from her to protect her, and that sort of thing. So you have this conflict with Peter trying to be with Gwen, but he can't, he doesn't want to be with Gwen, and then... Um, it takes you into another direction of Harry Osborn and his dad dying from a disease and then eventually he dies from a disease and then you find out Harry has the same disease and he needs Spider-Man's blood in order to cure his disease because of the healing factor in Spider-Man. So it takes you in the story direction of Gwen Stacy being torn between trying to be with Peter and also trying to split herself being apart from Peter as well. All in all, it is a Spider-Man film. Um, you also have Max Baxter, who is a... Uh, I don't know if it's uh, his last name, Baxter, sorry. But he um, becomes Electro, and he does that because he... He, for, of an accident that happens in Oscorp, and yeah. That's pretty much the story, so I'll leave it like that. Um, how was the film, though? Well... In my honest opinion, I have to say it's very messy. The writing is very messy. You go, you get um, transition from one scene to the other, and you just don't get a break from just getting received information about things. So Peter goes from like dealing with Gwen Stacy to tr dealing with his um, parents' um, death and the mystery behind that, to dealing with Harry and his problems. Dealing with um, being Spider-Man and um, trying to make sure Aunt May doesn't know. Yeah, so he's it's just transitions very much, a lot. And there are a lot of subplots in this film that just don't necessarily need to be there. And they're unnecessary. So unfortunately, the film is not focused on just one or two subjects. It's just focused on a lot of different things. And it just is really frustrating to watch the film because you can't just sit there and just watch it and focus on one thing because you get transitioned to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. So it really... The film, however, is okay, I guess. The Spider-Man suit does look a lot better along with Andrew Garfield's portrayal of Spider-Man. I enjoy much more than Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. He does really well. He um, relates to people a lot more like Spider-Man. And he also um, takes on the role of Spider-Man very seriously. And also, he has a lot more humor to him, which I like in the Spider-Man films. And, you know, he was perfect like that. And I like Spider-Man. But however, unfortunately, when he's um, Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield is not the best on the screen. Just saying. I don't like him as Peter Parker. I just didn't buy him as a Peter Parker character. But however, um, moving along with the film... Um, there isn't really much to talk about. Like, there are some good scenes with Spider-Man, but there are just some ridiculous um, subplots that just don't necessarily need to be there. And it, that's what brings down the film a lot, because it transitions too much. And it's just like, hey, this is what happened to Peter Parker's dad. Now let, let's make this a part of the film. Also, let's make Harry Osborn's illness a part of the story. And Gwen's, the fact that he's torn between being with Gwen and not being with Gwen in the film. And... Uh, let's um, add in Electro as the villain for a little bit. Oh, and um, oh, and hey, let's just make let's just chuck in the Green Goblin for the sake of it. Oh, and finally, um, let's tease um, Sinister Six while we're at it, just for the next film. 
because you just aren't focused in this film. The film just isn't focused on just one thing. They just want to split between so many storylines. And even the fact that you want to try and invest in these characters, the only character I was the most kind of interested in was maybe Harry Osborn's character, but I didn't like the actor who portrayed him. So yeah, that was just my little... So yeah, unfortunately with this film, like, it, you will enjoy it for the sake of, it's a really okay Spider-Man film. It's a pretty good film like that. But there were a lot of things missing, like the fact that um, Peter going to the Bugle to, uh, like, you know, collect his money. The only time he is ever talking to James Jameson is on the phone or email. And that's just, it's just not funny like that. Like, that's what the kind of, unfortunately, it's just a film that does that lacks focus, in my opinion. The writing is just not focused enough, and it's just messy. They even kill off Gwen Stacy in the end, which I felt was a bad idea because no one gave it a shit about her character in the end. I didn't. I just was like, well, she decided she wanted to be there for Peter and that she was going to do it anyway, even though she knew what kind of danger she was getting into, and then she just put herself in danger. And then Peter blames himself. It just doesn't make sense. Especially since that death scene could have been better used for a different film. It could have been better used for the third film. Why? Because it's a great moment in comic book history and they wanted to do it in a film. They rushed it. They should have done it better by just doing a, saving it for a third film and making the second film much more co coherent and much making much more sense. I haven't talked much about... Um, Jamie Foxx's character because I feel like he's fine although I feel like the way he's written into the story to be the villain it I feel like it's too much like the Batman film Batman Forever because Jim Carrey's um, Riddler was pretty much I have an obsession with Batman I mean Bruce Wayne and then he becomes a villain like that Jamie Foxx was the same obsession with Spider-Man then becomes a villain to Spider-Man but all in all, this film was just messy, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. It's an average film. You can watch it, and you may get enjoy the, some of the parts of the film that are really good, but there is a lot of messiness of just transitions to too many scenes where you just don't, of stories you don't really give a shit about. They should have saved a lot of this for later. The Green Goblin could have been teased in this film, but you could have just saved it for later until the next film. Unfortunately, they wasted the Green Goblin's character and they were just thought, hey, the Green Goblin was successful in Raimi's films, let's use him in our films. Thank you again, guys, for tuning into Wilson Reviews. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, hit a like on the video. If you are interested in my content and want to see more, subscribe for more at Wilson Reviews. If you have ideas for film reviews or games for me to play or animes to watch or TV shows to watch, um, message me on Facebook at Wilson Reviews as well. If you also want to um, share this to your friends and family, that would be a good idea to do as that will help me out. Thank you again, guys, for tuning in. I hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.